Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. You know those times when you want to test a 12 volt accessory before committing to the install? Maybe some new lighting, maybe a new head unit, or maybe that random gadget that you just bought online. And maybe instead of dragging out a battery every time or popping the hood, I'm trying out something that might just make my DIY garage a bit smarter. The Finerci IPS 3608 power supply. In this video, we'll unbox it, go through its features, and I'll show you real life examples of accessories that I would normally test before installation. Let's go. All right, I'm excited. Let's open this up and see what's in the box. So first impressions, the build quality is great. It's a nice solid aluminum alloy case. It has a nice weight to it, not too heavy, but also not too light, so it doesn't feel cheap. It's got a nice tiltable screen here for various viewing angles. We'll look at that more later, but that's important because depending on where you put it on your workbench, you don't want to have to crouch down or look way up on your tiptoes or get a stool and have a look at it. So we have all the accessories or cabling to get started. We have our AC power cord. We have our alligator clip in black for negative. We have our alligator clip in red for positive. And we have a USB-C to USB-A charging cable. And of course we have our user manual. Skipping about halfway through, you get to the English section here. And this will tell you all you need to know about using this unit. The Finerci IPS 3608 gives us 285 watts, up to 36 volts, and 8 amps. And for me, 8 amps is pretty decent because for the sensitive 12 volt accessories that I install commonly on the channel, I think this fits the bill. Let's run through a few of the features that stood out to me. First, precision. It can adjust voltage down to 0.01 volts and current down to 0.001 amps with less than 10 millivolts of ripple. That's extremely clean power. On the front, you have dual USB outputs that support fast charge protocols like PD, QC, FCP, SCP, and AFC. So yes, that means you can top up your phone while doing tests. The display lets you choose between different modes. Standard output, VI curve or graph, and A and C output. You can also save up to six preset configurations for quick recall. That's great if you're testing similar accessories regularly. And Finerci even includes PC software for monitoring and logging, plus eight different protection modes, things like over voltage, over current, and reverse polarity, which is perfect for the guys like me that want to experiment without frying anything. We have quite a bit of customizing in the settings menu. We have our language setup. We have our brightness control, volume control, metering switch, device address, and we can also change our user interface from dark mode or light. Here's an example of light. We'll go to the home screen. And we'll go back to dark. I think I like dark. So first up, let's test a pair of LED light pods. Normally I'd grab a 12 volt battery to do this, but now I can dial in exactly 12 volts on the IPS 3608. All right, so we have our lights here. We have our harness, but this has a relay as well as the provision for a switch. We're gonna bypass the relay so we can connect right to the wiring, which feeds the lights. So I happen to know which is positive already, which is right here. These are pretty nice alligator clips too, I must say. So I'm just making sure I have a good connection. So there, the relay is bypassed. Now we're going to set our voltage to exactly 12 volts. Push this button here. Now we're on the voltage column and I can move it left and right. So I can go way up if I want, but we want 12. So we can do it like that. Also, just so you know, you can scroll up and down throughout the range, wherever you want to fine tune it. Now push this again, we'll go to amps. 
and we're gonna set it to, I think three amps, we'll have enough headroom to see what these lights are drawing. So we'll go to three. So let's try it out. Well, it's definitely powering the lights, but here's our first test. So we have 7.36 volts, it should be 12. That tells me we're not giving these enough current, so we need to change that. So we will go to our amps and we'll crank it up to four and we will retry the test. So if we have enough headroom now with four, then this should read the 12 volts that we set it at. And then we'll get a reading of how many amps these are drawing, as well as how many watts they're outputting. There we go, so we got 12 volts. These are running at 2.674 amp 73 and 32 watts. So what this little test tells me is that we need a little more than three amps of current available to run these lights because when we first turned them on, three amps just wasn't enough. But once they stabilize, then they go down to about 2.74 amps of operating current. That's really handy for a guy like me to determine which fuse to use and which wire gauge to use for installation. Stuff I used to estimate on manufacturer specs alone. So next we're gonna test out this replacement head unit for my daughter's car. I often do this anytime I install a new head unit in a vehicle because I wanna test its functionality and just understand its operation before we go ahead with a full install. All right, you know the drill, we've gotta adjust our settings. Here's where the tilting screen works good. We can tilt it up so we can view it better. Now I am on preset M1, which I already set to 12 volts and three amps for the previous test. Just gonna alter this a little bit here. Keep it at 12 volts. I'm gonna go up to five amps. I doubt we'll need it. Okay, let's give it a try. Got our green run light, constant voltage, 12 volts. It's only drawing a little over, well, you can see it jumped there. We were one amp on the high side, but now it's leveled off to about 0.7 amps. Looks like it's booting up okay. Now, if we had speakers connected, we'd be able to test this further and we'd be able to figure out how much extra current that it draws with the speakers powered up at a reasonable volume level. Before we wrap this video up, let me show you a couple more things. Let's check out the VI curve display mode. This will show or help us perform real-time monitoring and control the voltage being supplied to the circuit. Again, more safety and great analytics if we want to understand the behavior of the device over a period of time. Remember earlier I mentioned that sometimes I do these tests right off of a battery. There is risk with that because a battery doesn't necessarily maintain constant voltage, which if you're not careful, especially with sensitive electronics, you could actually damage those components because of something known as voltage sag. One more quick safety test. This does have short circuit protection. So if we were to accidentally touch the leads together, when it's operating, we've got 12 volts right now with five amps. If I was to connect these, it will limit the current and not cause any damage. Every time I touch the leads, you can see that our current voltage changes to constant current and then the numbers and values start to drop. So more safety at work. So that's the Finerste IPS 3608. In my opinion, it certainly is a compact, affordable and portable DC power supply, great for automotive DIY testing. Between the precision, safety protections and eight amps of capacity, this is proving to be a good addition to help me with my workflow. So if this is something that you wanna check out for yourself, I'll leave links in the video description below for both US and Canadian customers. And if you enjoyed this content and like the review, hit that like button, please consider subscribing and we'll talk to you next time.